the very first word of the Bible in beginning, that's what it means, actually shows Jesus, Yeshua, if you're in Israel, Yeshua Mashiach, the Messiah. You are going to see that, I promise you, because when you understand that the very word, Breshit, which means in beginning, spelled out, actually tells the story of the gospel. Don't believe me? Watch this, and you're going to find out. Watch it. This is going to be so good, you guys. I can't wait. And I promise you, you're going to be blessed immensely, my friend. Okay, in the beginning, right? That's what Genesis means. But this is where we get our word genes or genealogy or all those kinds of things. That's what the root word for that. But let's go to the Hebrew, you guys. So Genesis, in beginning is what it means. This is brashit right here. That's what it is. And remember, Jesus said, I am the beginning Remember, he said, I'm the beginning and the end in Revelation. But he said, I am the beginning, which is what? The Aleph. This is the very first letter in Hebrew. And it's called Aleph. Aleph. And you can see there's there's a design here. It's really a beautiful word. And each word actually tells a story, too. You're going to find out more about that. This is going to be so good when you see this. So here's the second word in Hebrew, Bet. Okay. And it's like a picture of a shelter. So you have Aleph, then you have Bet. Now watch this. Aleph, this is the Paleo Hebrew, which is the ancient Hebrew. And what it was, was this is a picture, okay? And it's a picture of an ox, like a strong ox or a bull. And it's kind of like horsepower, right? So like <laughs> we say horsepower in America for the the strength of, of a vehicle, how powerful it is. Well, that's the same idea with this, this word right here, this letter Aleph, Okay, and here's the modern, more modern looking, uh, modern of Hebrew, and you can see it still has that same kind of a style, but that's the, the ancient Hebrew right there. Very first word of their alphabet, Aleph. And it means God or strength or like, you know, God's, God's oneness and his power and his strength. And that's what Aleph means, the very first word in the Bible. So let's keep going, guys, or the letter of Hebrew, excuse me. So Aleph, it's the upper Yod, that's this right here, the Yod, okay? And then the lower Yod, those are two Yods right there, and then it's separated by this bar. So the upper Yod represents the hidden aspects of God, while the lower Yod represents God's revelation and presence in the world, like Jesus, right? So Bet, Bet, this is the second letter. So you have Aleph, then you have Bet. And this one is like an image of a house, right? Well, here it's like a tent. This is the ancient Hebrew right here, the Paleo Hebrew. And you can see it's a shelter, a a place where you would live, right? A dwelling place. That's what Bet is. We have Aleph, we have Bet. Those are the first two letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And by the way, they read from right to left, you guys. That's how the Hebrew uh, language is read. And it was before our English, and I, it's the right way. It's the way God designed it. So Bet, it's a tent, house, dwelling place. So here you have the first two letters in the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph, Bet, and that's where we get alphabet. Isn't that crazy, you guys? We get alphabet from Aleph, Bet, from the ancient Hebrew. Amazing. God's always first in everything, you guys. This is so awesome. This is amazing. Let's go back to this. So here's all the the images here. And you can see if you take this and you turn it up right side like this. Well, not right side. If you turn it the way we write it, it's an A for Aleph, like the first letter of our alphabet. And then you could take this tent, this dwelling place like this and turn it up and it's a B. That's where we get A and B. Well, what else does A and B combine mean? Abba. It's Ab, like father. It means father. So Aleph Bet, the first two words of the Hebrew, of the Hebrew alphabet mean father. Okay. Now watch this. Then Bet, and then the next one is Resh. Resh is the image of a head. And you can see that this is the most ancient image of it right here. And then this is the Paleo Hebrew of it right here. Okay, it's still like a head, right? And then it's like this right here, which is where we get the R, the Resh, the R, right? If you just turn it the other way, you that's where the English got the R. And it what does bet mean? It means bar. So the B and the R together spell out bar, which is what? Sun. 
like bar mitzvah, right? The bar mitzvah, which literally translated means son of commandment. Mitzvah is the, the law, right? The commandments of God. Bar is the son. So it's bar mitzvah, the son of a commandment. So Genesis, in the beginning, the very beginning, the very first word of the Bible, watch this, you guys. Bereshit, okay? You're going to see here in a minute, this is going to blow your mind. You're going to see how this spells out the gospel, the very first first word. And I can imagine Jesus on that road to Emmaus on resurrection day with those two disciples going through this with him. It says he went through the law of Moses and the prophets and he showed them where he's found in all of it. I'll bet he went started right there in the very beginning. Watch this, you guys. This is going to blow your mind. This is amazing. Here it is. All right. This is the word for Genesis. Bereshit. Bereshit. Okay, watch this. And remember, you read it from here to here that way. All right. So here's the B, right? The the bet. There's the resh. We already talked about those, right? And then the aleph, the aleph. And then there's the sheen, okay? And the yod, the yod, and the tav, all right? That spells out bereshit. So let's break it down. So the first part of Bereshit is the Bet and the Resh. Remember, this is the dwelling place, the tent, or it means the sun, too, with the, with the B and the R. Now we have the sun, right? There's the head, the bar, right? The sun. So what we're showing here is that it's the bar, the sun. He's the head of the tent or the dwelling place. Remember, the Father gave the Son all authority. It's just like... Joseph, who was a type of Jesus Christ, a picture and a portrait and a, a story showing, a foreshadowing of showing Jesus. Remember, Pharaoh made him in charge of everything. He, everything. He was in charge of it all, except for he who sat on the throne, Pharaoh being a picture of the father and Jesus and Joseph being a picture of the son. Wow. So, okay, let's get back into the presentation. This is going to, this is going to blow your mind when you see this, you guys. So here we go. Let's get back into it. So here you have the son. Okay, then you have the R, the head. He is the head. And then you have the Aleph, which means God, right? This is how you spell Bereshit. Okay, it's the B E R, now the A, the Aleph, which means God. Then you have the Shin, the, the Sheen. The Sheen is, is, is actually, it means destroy or destruction. And it actually was a flesh, it's a picture, an image of a flesh hook of three teeth. And it's also where we get W in the English, interestingly enough. But this would actually be one point, another point, and then another point. So it's like three points. And Jesus, my friend, he had piercings on both arm, both hands, right? And then one through his feet. Isn't that amazing? Three piercings when he was on the cross. And here we're seeing it in the very first word of the Bible. So sheen, as part of the breshit, all right? So this was actually a symbol of teeth in the ancient Hebrew. Like it's a crushing and a devouring is what that means. And destroying, you know, the flesh hook of, of three teeth. And it's kind of like Shin Bet. Uh, Shin Bet is a, a, a special operations unit in the in Israel. You know, they're really tough, so they have that name. And then we have the Yod in Bereshit. The Yod. The Yod it means the hand. Okay? And it's pronounced with the Yuh. Yuh. The Yod. And God uses this a lot for his name. And it's, and it's a small little thing, almost like a, it's almost like a quotation mark. It's a little yod. And, it, and here's the hand in the ancient Hebrew. This would be an arm. And there's the hand. And that's what it means, the hand. Now, y the Y, we always see that. The yod we see in God's name in Yahweh, right? Hallelujah. That's the yod. Yah. Yah is short for Yahweh. Jerusalem is Yerushalayim. Joseph will be Yosef. And Jesus in the Hebrew is Yeshua with the Yod, the Yeshua. All right, let's get back into the presentation. This is so fun. I love doing this, you guys. Okay, let's get back into it. So the last word of the Breshit, the very first word of the Bible for Genesis is the Tav. Okay, the Tav. And in the ancient, see, it's, it's been changed to this, but the ancient 
Even around Ezekiel's time and even earlier, it was a cross, a cross. And it was a sign, a covenant, a symbol of ownership. This is where you would sign your signature, right? It was the cross, a symbol of ownership. Jesus owned that cross. He clung to that cross for you and me to die. So that's the last word, the tav. Okay, now we're going to put it all together. Here it is, guys. Here it is. Bet the sun, right? Bet the resh, the head. The sun is the head. And then the I left the God, God the Father, had the sun, right? The wrath of God the Father destroyed. Flesh hook of, of three teeth, right? The, this is the sheen and then the yod. By the hand, or by his own hand, he went to the cross. It wasn't the Jewish people who killed him. It wasn't the Romans. He willingly went to the cross because he could have just went like this, and everybody would have been dead who was trying to crucify him if he wanted to. Or he could have called in legions of angels, like Jesus even said, but he didn't because he wanted to save you and to save me. This is the group, this is the greatest news ever. This is the good news, which is what gospel means. This is the message, the good news message that God came down. God the Son came down to live out to be a human and God at the same time, and then to die on this cross for you and me, and then to be raised again in three days so that you and I can have life forever. It's a rescue mission, you guys. But let's go back into the presentation. Look at this. Brishit, the very first word of the Bible, which means Genesis or in beginning, beginnings, right? There's the son, okay, who's the head. The God the Father made him the head of the of the dwelling place, right? That he's making for us right now. And then God the Father had him and by he destroyed, God had him destroyed by his own hand. And to go to the cross as a sign, a covenant, a symbol of ownership so that he can own us. He bought us, you guys. Isn't this amazing? Brashit. I love that, don't you? And Jesus said this in Luke chapter 24. He said, all these things were written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms, Jesus said that. He said, they must be fulfilled. All those things written about me must be fulfilled. And they were. <laughs> there it is, guys, right there. It is so awesome. So Jesus is in the Old Testament. This is episode one, you guys. And he's also, the Old Testament's called the Tanakh in, in Hebrew, the Tanakh. And he's all over it, guys, all over it. And we're starting right now, right here in this episode. So the books of the Tanakh or the Torah, the Law of Moses. Remember, Jesus said that. He put it in this order. He said, those things were written about me in the Law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Jesus did that. So that's a Tanakh. The T-A stands for the Torah. The N-A stands for Navim, which means prophets. And then the K is the Ketuvim, which are the Psalms and the Proverbs. They're also called the writings. So isn't that great, you guys? Don't you love that? I, I love how we can find Jesus in all scripture. He's in all of it. The gospel spelled out in the very first word of the Bible. And in John chapter one, what does it say? In the beginning was the word, speaking of Jesus, and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, the father. The son was there already, and so was the Holy Spirit. They were there. And a lot of people have a hard time with the Trinity, or you could say the triune. I like that better, triune God, because he's one God, no doubt about it, one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. He's one God. Okay, the Jewish people are right about that. But he's three, a triune God, three in one. It's like, it's like this. There's one family. God invented the family to show us this. Okay, the fa everything's a foreshadowing of him. So the family's one family, but you see a father who's like the protector, the strength, like that ox, right? The strong arm. He's 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 the strength and the power, the father, and all and the main authority figure. And then you have the son, right? And the father gives all authority to the son. So you have the father and you have a son. And then you have the bride or the, the wife who's a lot like the Holy Spirit. 
Now, I'm not saying the Holy Spirit is feminine or a woman. No, he's always referenced in the masculine as he. But however, women have the same attributes. The mothers especially have the same attributes as God, the Holy Spirit. They're comforters, helpers. Remember, God said, I'm going to make a helper for you, Adam. And out of his side came Eve, which is another picture because out of the side, right? That's where Jesus was pierced. And he died on the cross. And then what was birthed? The bride of Christ. (laughs) So there's so much. We're going to go through so much of this. I can't wait, you guys. So don't forget, you want to click on this playlist right here. Jesus in the Old Testament. This is the first episode. We're going to go into everything. Okay, we're going to find Jesus all over it. We're in the first five books right now, the Torah written by Moses. And I'm so excited about this, you guys. I hope you are too. God bless you. I love you.